Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Thanks for joining us for another Make It video. Today we're going to be looking at our Craft Nouveau CD collection, which is a beautiful collection if you're into your feminine florals and you're loving those beautiful kind of ergonomic design and feels of the, the early 19th century. So this is the period before Art Deco came in. So absolutely beautiful and this is one of the collections from the CD. Now all I've done is teamed this up with a little bit of mirror board and I've done it on craft card to turn this beautiful pyramid topper into a winter ivy birthday card. Now I don't know whether you can see the glitter on the ivy because it may still be a little bit wet but that's what happens when you make cards it doesn't dry immediately. So I'm now going to pop off and I'll show you how I created this card. So to make today's card I have my Craft Nouveau CD and from that CD I have printed out the two sheets that I want to use. This is one kit or one, um, one pair if you like. So this is the Winter Ivy um, Craft Nouveau topper. It's a pyramid topper as you know. And there's the backing paper and some of the other elements that you can use along with the card. So those are my printed sheets from the CD. Uh, I'm also going to be using a sheet of silver mirror card. Just box standard silver mirror card because this obviously is a winter ivy card. A sheet of craft cardstock. So just standard craft cardstock. And also from the CD I've printed out a couple of the inserts onto some vellum. You can see through that. Um, this is the one that I'm favouring, but I did that one as well just in case. Can't really decide what to do for this one. And the only other things I'm going to use in the production of this card is some stickles. Now this is the diamond stickles, you don't have to use the diamond, you can use the ice, you can use the stardust, you can use any of the clear or white, any of that you would use for snowflakes, that kind of um, effect. So I've just got, this is the diamond one. And I have a embossing folder, now I've put some black card into this embossing folder so you can see the pattern better. Now this is an anagriffin one. Uh, it's a 5x7 because I need that size. So it's 5x7. So it is a fairly large one. Um, and it's a floral pattern which fits in with the theme or the Art Nouveau theme that we've got for this card. So I'll be using that with the Murray board as well. And I just have a craft knife, pokey tool, my bone folder, and a spare craft knife just in case one of the blades is blunt. Okay, so. I'm going to go off and cut out all the pieces that I need from these two sheets and I will see you in two minutes. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut everything out. I've also trimmed down a piece of the silver mirror board down to, uh, now this is the embossing folder and this is a five by seven. So I've cut the piece of mirror board down to um, six and a half by four and a half. So that's going to give me, if I'm my main top, my main topper, that's going to give me a nice border all the way around that when it goes into the embossing folder. And when it's placed in the embossing folder, it's going to have a nice all over pattern on that, uh, on that mirror board. So when we come to put it through, we'll just need to line that up and put that through our, um, our die cutting machine or our big shots. Now I'm also going to use this as our base layer. Now this is the piece of craft cardstock and all I'm going to do for that is I'm just going to fold that in half because it's already um, A4. I literally just need to fold it in half to make our A5 card blank. Now the backing paper on the sheet it had a white border around it. Now you can cut that out with the white border and it will completely cover your card front. I wanted some of that little brown showing through around the edges so I've trimmed that white border off so that when that gets stuck down we have our nice earth tone 
around the outside of the card and then we will have that silver on there. Now I've also got another piece of mirror card to put as a um, backing layer on this so I will need to trim some of this off a little bit later so we'll have the brown, the silver, then the main and then we'll have our silver topper on there with that, so our silver layer and then that on the top. So everything's all just about ready to go. So I'll pop everything to one side and as we say we have that, so we have our card blank already done. So all we have to do now is to prepare our topper, our card front I should say. So this is the other sheet of mirror board and I'll just put all our layers for our pyramid topper inside there. I've got a top on the brain today haven't I? Okay, so grab the trimmer. Now we know what size uh, an A5 card is, it's 148.5 millimetres by 210. So we need to just trim that down a little bit. So 1.48, so if we do that at 144, like so, we know we've got the right width. And then if we turn that round at 210, if we take four millimetres off 210, that's going to leave us with 206 millimetres. So that's going to give us a couple of millimetres border all the way around the front of our card. So if I lay that now on the top, that should be, yeah, there's a nice little border all the way around. Now, we need to trim this down so that it matches. So instead of it being 144, let's make it smaller, it needs to be 140. Now look at that, that's just about right to give us that little bit of a border or there already. But I just want to take off a little bit extra because I just want that showing through a tiny tiny bit more. Now I'm not being um, exact with this, I'm literally just removing a millimetre or so just so that we can see a little bit more of that silver on the card. So we then have three layers which will look absolutely beautiful and nicely finished when we're done. Okay, so just pop that trimmer to one side for now and then all we need to do for this now is just to stick these down. So I've just moved my mat haven't I? Here we go. So if I just go ahead and stick those down, I'm just going to use wet glue and I'm just going to use the Colol multi-purpose because that gives me that wiggle room that I need to make sure I get all my um, all my mats all nicely laid up. Now I've clogged my opening, there we go, and it comes teeming out. So I'll just add a little bit around the edges, a little bit down the middle. And then we're just going to layer that down. I'm trying not to get the collar onto your mirror board because it does have a particular or well, peculiar effect on it. Sometimes it takes the shine off, which is definitely not what you want. Okay, so we've got our mirror layer stuck down, and I just need to add our backing paper layer. You only get one shot at this really. So make sure you don't get any on your fingers, just give them a rub to get rid of it. And bring your card blank back in. Just throwing everything all over the floor. I'm being a bit cack handed today, I know. Okay, and then we're going to lower our backing paper down. And because we've got that wiggle room, we can just adjust it so that it fits with that nice border all the way and then just gently give it a push down to make sure that it starts to stick. 
and then we can put that to one side now look at that look at that shininess there you go how nice is that and that will give it that lovely sort of wintry feel so I'll just pop that to one side so that can start setting and then we're going to bring in our backing paper or our Miri backing paper and my big shot which is here which is very very well used this is as practically as old as I am it's the only big shot I've ever owned so it's nearly 10 years old and it's still going nice and strong so brilliant stuff and just run that through and tab one now because my mat is on there it's a bit slippery well, that should do us and I can put that away yeah I'm all at a kilter now look better and then when we take that off we have a beautiful panel come on got you to focus thank you a beautiful panel that gorgeous floral and then that is going to be our main background for that beautiful Art Nouveau pyramid topper that we have there so I want to start raising this up on foam pads straight away so I'm just going to grab some foam pads from my stash I'm using square ones or large square ones this time. I'm going to put one in the middle. I always put one in the middle when I'm doing a pyramid because that creates your center column of rigidity when you're placing your toppers on. Because they get smaller as you go along or as you build them up, then it alters all the way around, but the center one always stays the same or should always stay the same. Right. I don't want to play today these ones. Okay, so my main topper Make sure I get that in the middle. Give it a gentle push. Now you could leave it there. You don't have to add all the other layers on if you don't want to, but I'm going to. So, one in the middle, and then four corners. Okay, and this will give us the depth and dimension. Now, of course, you could add other silver die cuts, you could add florals, you could add twigs, you could add anything that you want to to make this card um, look as wintry as you want it to. Now, bearing in mind, it is a winter birthday card, it's not a Christmas card, it's a winter birthday card. So I'm just going to see if I can line that up with the outside. Make sure. And then just gently drop that down, push in the center. Now, hopefully, when you're looking directly above, like you are doing, if you've got the pyramid right, you shouldn't be able to see the join, really. So, hopefully, because. The only way for me to make sure I've got the join correct is if I lean right over and you can see the back of my head. I'm trying to avoid doing that, so because that doesn't make for good viewing, does it? No, it doesn't. So, 
like that. And Pyramid Toppers are one of these things which are a really, really good standby. And they do add a real wow factor to your card. You may have done Pyramid Toppers for years and years and years, and they may be years and years old, but there are still people out there who receive these cards that may never have seen one. Uh, and so it's still very, very brand new to them. And also, as more and more people get into the card making, all these you know, techniques that we take for granted, all these toppers that we take for granted, are all brand new to them. So it's great to be able to carry on uh, and carry on showing people what can be done. Now for this one, I'm just going to put three on. So I'm just going to put one at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. So I don't think it needs any more than that. There we go. Oop. And then we'll see if we can get that lined up. Now I'm finding points within the image Try and make sure that we're getting that as close on as we possibly can. And there you go. So from your point of view, hopefully you can't really see the edges and the image doesn't look distorted. That does look very three-dimensional. Okay, so I'm then going to stick this down onto the card front, but I'm just going to stick it down with glue. I'm not going to put it onto foam pads because I think there's enough depth and dimension in that already and I'm using the multi-purpose glue because it's going to fill in some of those reservoirs on the embossed mirror and then we'll bring that back in and then lay that right into the middle like so. And again we've got just a tad wiggle room. And then if you want you can just push slightly up just to leave you some room down at the bottom so that your sentiment can fit nicely. So just gently ease it up until you're confident that it's all nicely grabbed and you have enough room down there at the bottom for your sentiment. Okay, so there's my sentiment out. It's just going to say with all our love. I'll just grab my punch. Again, these sentiments on this CD do coordinate with the stamping up punches. This is the decorative label punch. And just line that up. Now I'm trying to do this without getting my head in shot again, so you'll have to forgive me. It takes a while for me to just manoeuvre it into place without being able to obscure your view. That should do. And that I will pop on foam pads again. Let's put two, one on either side. like that and then you can place that in the middle lining up your points with the bottom of the mirror like so and then using our diamond stickles just clear that bit of space out of the way I'm just going to add a little bit of that glitter around the edges of the ivy just to give it a little hint of winter frost so I'm not covering them completely I'm just putting slight just little dabs of winterinessness and that is a new word now just adding a little bit, just little dabs, 
tiny little highlights of that silver which will pick out the colours underneath and it will be totally coordinated with your car. Now I don't think I've missed any. Maybe a couple of tabs there. And one there, one there. Now you could use a wink of Stella pen if you want to. And again, you can go around just the bottom of your base pyramid because that also has that ivy pattern on there and you can create a little glitter border, border around there and I'm going to do exactly the same thing I've turned it upside down just so I can follow it around the top just to add to that overall effect whether you can see that with it not being dry yet. But once that's dried, all that glitter will sparkle and it will be picked up by the lights of whoever you send that to. Obviously, you wait till it's dry before you pop it in the post. And then, if you wanted to go ahead and further embellish it, you can add some pearls, you could have added a little piece of lace if you wanted to. Um, Whatever you want, whatever you want. Now I did have, I always put them down, I, I always get some gems out just in case, just some plain bog standard clear or white if you like gems and by the time I get around to using them or wanting them they always disappear again. It's kind of like a game and again I can't find them so I will have to do without for this one but you can add just um, a couple of little gems onto there too if you wanted that effect. Now just to finish off we have our insert so I'm just going to pop that up there out of the way and I'm just going to fold my insert make sure that it's aligned like so and then I'm just going to trim off a minute, tiny, tiny bit from there. And I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing and take off the same amount. Now I always start cutting on the crease when I'm doing something like this because that's where it's strongest. And then I'm just going to take off a millimetre or so down that side too. We'll start at the top and hopefully, yes, the nasty thought that I may end up tearing that. Now I'm just going to pop that to one side and this is going to be the insert for the inside of the card. Now I've trimmed it down just a little bit because I want it just to sit inside the card and I don't want it to stick out past there. As you can see, it just fits in nicely where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a little bit of tape down the inside there so that when you open it up, it automatically opens up the insert too. So I have got some double-sided tape. That's what happens when you tidy up. So make sure we're getting it the right way around. That'll do it just nicely. And I'm just going to run that down there. Now I'll just trim that to make sure there's no excess hanging over the edge. Like so. And the same. Like so. I'll just hang my scissors back up. Give it a push. And then using my pokey tool, I can just remove the backing from that tape. Try to take it off a bit too quick there. 
we've all been there, haven't we? There we go. And then bring that card back in. Open up the front cover. Place it where we think it's going to go. And then literally just close it down. Give it a slight push. Let's try not to move the mat again. And now when we open, there we go. You could, if you wanted to, just add a little bit of glue or tape into that corner there if you wanted, so that does hold down when you uh, when you open it up. But you don't have to. And that's where you can either stamp your sentiment or write your sentiment. And that's it. So that's our Winter Ivy Winter Birthday card. Nice and frosty for this time of year. So that's our Winter Ivy Birthday card from the Craft Nouveau CD collection. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would greatly help us if you do that because every time you click that thumbs up button, it tells YouTube that you want to see more from us and also they recommend our channel to other people too. So it does help us a great deal if you click the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. That way you'll be kept informed of all future videos. Okay, that's it from me and I'll be back again next Saturday.